Um, so thank you for, for, to everyone for, for joining um, this first, first part of a three-part series that's kind of looking at how to get your business online and, and noticed and, and, then, uh, and then be able to funnel people to, to make your website and uh, some e-commerce um, and just some tips and tools to be able to get uh, businesses ready for the upcoming holiday season and just this new reality that we're faced with with regards to, uh, you know, remote shopping, remote, um, uh, you know, engagement. And so, uh, you know, the first topic is really kind of a, uh, just an introductory of, so, you know, what's the importance of being online and, and how do you first get noticed to then be able to direct people to purchase things through your online store or at least be able to get noticed to bring them into your shop. And so, yes, I'll get you more in just a second. So, um, and so I know Carrie Ann started this business about a year ago and it seems like everything is going awesome. I would suggest uh, following her um, online and also getting involved with her uh, weekly emails that she's been sending out. There's just a tons of great, great tips, uh, just practical tips that you can use right there uh, on a daily basis within your business. And so with that, I'm going to hand it off to Carrie Ann and I'm going to satisfy this guy for a second. Thanks, John. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so let me share my screen. I'll get started. And then um, we have a QA and a at the end, but if you guys have a burning question halfway through, um, I probably won't see you all because you'll be all, you know, like in a little teeny tile on the side here. So feel free to just unmute yourselves and interrupt me um, if you have a burning question. Otherwise, write it down and we'll do Q&A at the end. Um, so let me share my screen with you. All right, so thumbs up if you guys see my slides. Sweet. That's like the first one. <laughs> I also did a class about two months ago and we were like three slides in and I finally realized nobody had any idea what I was talking about. They were looking at my Facebook page and I'm like, why didn't you guys tell me you couldn't see my slides? So now I'm always like, can you see, I have to ask people, can you see my slides? <laughs> Just to make sure everybody knows. Um, okay, so this is e-commerce and social media, kind of how they both merge together and uh, kind of what you need to know in a quick 25 minute presentation. Okay, so I love quotes. I'm kind of a quote nut. Um, so you'll always see if you take trainings or presentations from me or see things, you'll always see quotes popping up here and there. Um, but this one I love the most because this is really the difference between people who do, people or businesses who do well on social media versus the ones that don't. We really have to understand that social media, it's a dialogue, it's a back and forth, it's a conversation. It's not a monologue where you just blah, 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 and you know, there's not that communication back and forth, right? It's definitely a two-way street. And then um, I love the last part of this quote, social media is more like a telephone than a television, which means that you want to have authentic, engaging conversations with people via DMs, PMs, um, comments, likes, you name it, and not just sit there on the sidelines and watch. Your business will go nowhere if you aren't out there engaging and being active and participating and also, um, you know, vice versa for other businesses. And the people that know that really get it right. And you can see the difference between those businesses, right? And I'm gonna actually highlight some of the businesses that I think are doing a really great job here at the end of the presentation. Okay, so who am I? Um, I know some of you, but I don't know everybody on the call. So um, I'm Carrie Ann Eckberg. I shortened my name to Carrie E. That's my Instagram name, um, mostly because my name is way too long and won't fit in the character limit required for Instagram. So I gave my name, myself a celebrity name for one day when I'm famous. So um, you guys can call me Carrie Ann, Carrie E. It doesn't matter, but you'll see me around social media as Carrie E. So I am a Gig Harbor native, born and raised here. Um, my parents were small business owners actually downtown on the waterfront for 25 years um, when I grew up. So I kind of grew up in a small business. My husband, who also is from Gig Harbor, um, his family started a small business um, in 1896, actually. <laughs> so much, much, much before my family did. Um, but he's the fourth generation from that small business here in the local area. So I kind of come from a line of small businesses. And I've always wanted to have my own small business. And I didn't ever really know what that was going to be or how that would look like for me until about a year ago when, you know, the universe collided and I figured out that I love social media. Um, I love training and engagement. And I love helping small businesses. So hence, um, here I am. So one of the things that kind of brought me to where I am today, so I joined the military after college and I was kind of flung into this career of teaching and um, educating different aspects of, you know, the military things that we were doing. I was in a, a personnel officer and I still am. I'm in the reserves now. Um, but I was always in a piece where people would say, hey, can you train on this topic? Can you do this? And so I really came to love 
the education piece, um, the, the getting in front of people that I'm kind of a PowerPoint nerd and a Canva nerd now. I love creating presentations. Mary and I were just kind of laughing about this. Um, nobody really likes to do that, but I love it. It's like my creative side gets to come out. And um, I really have to thank the military for that. But the one problem when I was in the military and then after the military, I worked in federal service for quite a while and I still got to teach, but I wasn't actually teaching content that I loved. So um, I really wanted to step away and find a way to be able to do the education, the teaching, but then combine it with actually a topic that I loved. Uh, because before, you know, in federal service, I was a labor and employee relations officer, which means that I dealt with labor negotiations with unions. Uh, not fun. I was not excited to talk about parking spots and lunch rooms and employee discipline issues. Um, and, you know, I did a lot of supervisor training. I did a lot of mediation and stuff like that. And that to me was fun, but the topics weren't great. So I finally am really excited to be able to put together the training and education piece that I love combined with a topic that I actually like to teach about. So um, you guys will hopefully see that passion um, because this is my favorite thing to do. So thank you again, John and Mary, for asking me to do this. All right, that's enough about me. I think you guys know enough and you can probably go on social media and figure out the rest because I'm a pretty open book on my pages. All right, like every good military presentation, we have to have an overview. So you know what I'm gonna tell you about. Going to talk a little bit about why e-commerce that's probably going to be pretty um you know elementary stuff most of you will understand why you should have e-commerce um, i'm going to talk to you about why social media though and then i'm going to talk to you about where the two things merge together and then i'm going to give you some tips to be successful on social media now we could spend probably eight hours and i could teach you so much more but i don't want to overwhelm you and i've only got 30 minutes so i'm just going to like get the tip of the iceberg get your brains thinking and give you a few pointers to take away um, I'm going to talk to you guys about how to drive sales from your social media, either to your website or just sales in general from social media and how that works, like how you get people to buy stuff from you on Facebook and Instagram. I'm going to show you a few great examples from some businesses um, in Gig Harbor downtown that I think are killing it, are doing a great job with their social media, with their overall branding, presence, image, their e-commerce. And um, so you guys can follow them. I'm sure you all are already following them. But uh, And then we're going to do some Q&A at the end. So let's get started. All right, oh, my picture is gone. I'm sorry, I don't know why my picture is gone. Let me see if it's in the next one. Oh yeah, I'm good on the next one. All right, well, we'll go back. Well, you have to look at a beautiful cloud. <laughs> sorry on that one. Okay, so why e-commerce? So the biggest thing is honestly to reduce cost, right? Um, you don't have to always have a storefront open nine to five. You um, don't have to always be there in person. If you've got a really strong e-commerce presence, your business can sell itself 24 seven. It could be somewhere, something that people can get to all the time. And in the current situation that we're in, um, this has been very apparent that having a strong e-commerce presentation since March, if you guys didn't believe it back then, I think everybody in the last six to eight months has learned you've got to be online and you've got to be searchable and findable because people are still shopping. They're just not going out to do that. So they're all shopping online, um, Facebook, Instagram, websites, Google searches, you name it. That is what they're doing now. Um, it's also easier and more convenient for people um, as family dynamics change and grow. Not everybody has time to go to a brick and mortar location. And so having an option for people um, to do both is great. I think it's very helpful. Uh, it's also a great way for you guys to receive immediate feedback too. People are, um, you know, they get something, they love it, or they get something and they maybe don't love it as much. It's a really great way for them to provide that instantaneous feedback to you. And then you can make those changes and implement you know, whatever the change is or whatever you need to do almost immediately to solve that problem from happening again. Um, so people are looking for, I'm going to send you a Facebook message. I'm going to send you an Instagram message. I want to send you an email from your website. This instant sort of communication is something where you wouldn't probably get that before. So I think kind of foot stomp the point that having e-commerce is very, very important. All right, let's get off this ugly slide and onto this one. Okay. So um, oh, my picture's gone on this one too. Hmm. Okay, hold on. All right, can you guys see the pictures now? All right, Canva glitch. <laughs> I guess sometimes when you change to the presentation mode, it messes with your photos. All right. Okay, 
So let's talk about why social media is so important. So yes, search traffic is important, right? Your Google searches, your Yahoo, all that kind of stuff is very important. But social media traffic is also a huge driver to your websites and for online sales. I mean, think about the amount of people. This is the biggest, mar biggest marketplace that you will ever find. Three billion people on social media, okay? This means that you as a small business can now reach a global marketplace. You in small geek, downtown Gig Harbor can reach anybody in the United States, anybody in the world, if you're on social media because all of those people are also on social media as well and they don't necessarily care if they're buying from somebody in a different state right if you have a product or a good or a service that they want and they need and they love it and you market it well to them they're going to buy it from you okay so having a really a good social media presence is very important uh, also think about the fact that most people so think about how often you're on social media right so i would imagine some of you maybe more than others but on average people are on social media two to three hours a day that is a lot of time for you to have to be able to toss up a quick post or a video or a facebook ad for them to scroll through their feed and if it speaks to them if you write the copy if your creative is good they're going to click on it and chances are in that impulse moment they're going to buy something that they want or that they need okay so Think about how just being out there on social media, being at the right place at the right time, you're in front of these people, 3 billion people, two to three hours a day. If you have the right followers and you've built the right network, it shouldn't be that hard to do, okay? And so that's one of the things that I like to teach people is, is baby steps, yes, are important, but start with um, kind of like Paige was saying, get, get, your, you know, get the right followers, get your information in front of the right people, and then the rest will follow you. Also think about customer service. I kind of touched on this, um, but the other day I, let's see, what was it? I was on Instacart, right? And I got a massive package of sausages from Instacart that I didn't order. <laughs> and so I wanted to immediately give them feedback because I didn't, you know, I didn't want to be charged for those items. And so instead of like normally where you would like old school, pick up the phone and dial their customer service, I literally instantly, I went to their app and then I went to their Facebook page and I was like, great, I'm going to send them a quick message and see if I can get my money back on these sausages that I don't want. Um, and it worked within probably two hours, I had a refund, right? And so um, that's what people are looking for. So make sure too, that you also on the back end of things have customer service available and that you have somebody there or a way to answer as these questions comments, um, potential maybe customers come in through these messaging uh, messages and emails and things like that. Make sure that you're monitoring that as well. Um, also, social media obviously offers flexibility and convenience. Everybody can be on it at any time. Uh, it's so funny, I always look at my analytics and I find that most people are on between the hours of like 11 and like one. So they're at work, they're probably like getting ready for their lunch break. They're like hiding under their desk or maybe virtually now they're, you know, doing it from their home, but they're probably doing a little work, but they're also around lunchtime, they're scrolling through their social media, right? They're taking a little break. Um, and so that, you know, is also very important um, that you can be very flexible. They couldn't come down to your shop, you know, at 11 because they're working, but they can sure scroll through your profile or your website and see, you know, what you're about for 10 minutes. And then maybe they make a note to come back to that later or to go visit you later in person because they like what they saw. Okay. Also key here, if you do social media right, you can build brand champions and customers for life with very little cost. And a really great example of this, I think some of you might be on the Gig Harbor Moms Facebook group, but that man, that group, <laughs> those ladies are amazing. And they, if you get one of those ladies in there and, or two or three, and they love your business, they will promote the heck out of you. So just the other day, um, good example, there was uh, somebody on there who was looking for, hey guys, I'm moving to Gig Harbor in like two months. I need a hairstylist. And everybody is really excited to share their best favorite hairstylist in Gig Harbor because people want to be heard. They want to feel like their opinion matters. And so they're going to jump on there and they're going to give you a shout out if they, they know that you're out there, they like your business and um, they want to support you, right? So the easier you make it for them to remember you by being on social media, being there constantly, providing great content, great value, interacting and engaging with them, you're going to build those brand champions and they are going to do your marketing and advertising for you. Um, it's just, I love that group because I see it happen. I don't know, Paige, um, Brianna, are you guys on, are you guys on that group as well? Uh, 
you guys have seen this happen, right? It's crazy. And if somebody, if two or three people mention your name, then you better believe the person who posted it is probably going to choose you if more than one person recommends you. So um, that is one of the best ways that I can think of that social media works for small businesses, especially in the local area. So um, if you're not currently on some of those groups, feel free to jump on some of them. There's plenty. It's not just moms. Um, there's plenty of other groups for this local area. There's business owner ones. There's um, like, you know, uh, crafts, there's activity ones, all sorts of things out there. And um, if you jump on them, that is great. The one thing I would tell you though, is um, the best thing to do is let other people be your champions. So if somebody posts, Hey, um, you know, I'm looking for a new salon, right. To get my hair done at, it doesn't work as well. If you jump on and post, I'm so-and-so I do color. I'd love to do your hair. They're kind of be like, yeah, you're just trying to sell me, right? But if you just sit there and you can watch other people and then somebody says, oh, I know Paige, she's an amazing photographer. Um, you guys would love her. And then somebody else says that, then Paige can come on and say, oh, thanks so much. That's so nice of you to recommend me. I'd love to help. Like that's how that works, right? But if you're jumping on there first and you're saying, you know, buy for me, buy for me right away before anybody else recommends you, it doesn't go over as well. So that's uh, a really good helpful tip that really works well, I think. Okay, so let's talk about where social media and e-commerce kind of merge together, okay? Uh, so I always tell people to think of social media as your dating profile. So pretend you're all on like old school eHarmony, right? And you're, you know, I was never on there, but I'm assuming, I think my mom was for a while. Um, you know, you're assuming there's a picture of you and you're trying to figure out what to write and you want it to look nice so that when people are clicking, um, you know, they're going to say, oh, I might be interested in, in you. So the same thing goes hand in hand with social media. People are there to check you out, right? And if they like what they see and they can relate to you on social media, then they're more likely to follow you, to remember your brand and to buy from you in the future, right? You're building that relationship. So the biggest thing that I tell people is um, even if you don't want to be engaged, have engaging posts and you don't want to be on social media four five, six times a day, I mean, sorry, a week, uh, you can be on there that much, but that'd be a lot. So if you're, if you don't want to have, you know, the time to do you know, four to five posts a week, at least do two to three, make them look really nice. Get your branding down where your website, your Facebook, your Instagram, your Pinterest, YouTube, all looks the same. And then at least when they go to search for you, they're going to see that consistent branding and it's going to be that professional, really nice look. And they're going to see, you know, okay, this person is legit and I, I probably am going to want to buy from them because I like what I see. They seem to have it together and um, they're, they're, they have a great presence, a great branded presence out there. Um, so think about this. So 84% of shoppers review at least one social media site before purchasing. Okay. So think about the last thing that you guys purchased online. Um, was it from, did you see a Facebook ad maybe? Um, you know, what did you do? And, and this is like a new product, right? Something that's new to you that you didn't know of before. It's not like you've known, you know, so-and-so's business forever and you went to, you know, to buy something. What are the things that you did? And I'll give you guys a great example of this. I got hooked <laughs> by a Facebook ad. So this is Olive in June. It's a nail company um, and they offer these at-home manicure kits, right? For people that don't want to go to nail salons. So I saw a Facebook ad from this company, scroll through. I love having nice nails, uh, but I refuse to go to a nail salon right now. Um, I just, I can't do it. It's just not, I, can't, I cannot do it. So um, what I did was I saw this scroll through, this Facebook ad scrolled through right at the right moment. I clicked on it and I'd never heard of this company before. So I didn't immediately buy. I went to their Facebook page and I looked to see, okay, it was this a legit company. What are they you know, are they really selling stuff that people like? Uh, I looked at their website to see what other products they had to offer. And then I went and I saw their reviews, right? And I said, okay, let me see what people are saying about these, you know, are these really like great manicure kits? And I liked the, the reviews were great. I liked what I saw. They had a really clean, polished look. It was really easy for me to go from Facebook to website to Instagram to kind of stalk them a little bit before I decided to buy. And ultimately I spent 50 bucks on a nail kit <laughs> because they got me right. They had great advertising and marketing. They were very cohesive across their social media. And, um, they also have a great product. I got it. I love it. And you know what I did? I posted something about it in my, um, Facebook group. I have a social media Facebook group called the sweet life. And I got messages from two or three people in that group that said, you know, Hey, I'm going to buy that same kit. Uh, I, you know, which one did you get? What did you like about it? And I was like, man, the power of social media, 
I saw it. I liked it. I bought it. I told my friends about it. Two people bought it too. Okay. That's how it works. I mean, it's, it's really fascinating when you think about that process, but it, it really does make a difference. So, so think about that when you're putting yourself on social media, making sure that you've got that professional branded look and that you have some type of presence as much as you can. All right. Um, another thing, an average Facebook user clicks on 11 ads per month. doesn't mean they buy it, but they're going to click. Um, basically, there are almost one and a half billion daily users on Facebook, right? So um, Pinterest, same thing. Instagram, the stats are insane. So if you aren't on there, get there now because right now more than ever, I don't think we're moving away from virtual. We all know that right now we're in this huge virtual bubble. I don't think that's going to go away when things, you know, return to somewhat normalcy. This is here to stay. People like the convenience. So you guys get on there right now and, and get your businesses going on social media if you haven't already, because it's going to be so important in the future. All right. So some tips for success on social media. Do's. These are the do's. And then the next slide is the don'ts. The do's. Okay. Like I just talked about, get your branding together. If you're not familiar with or have never used Canva, I think probably most people have, uh, that is going to save your life as far as branding and consistency. It is a great graphic website. They've got templates you can use. You just change colors, change fonts, drop in pictures. Bam. You've got gorgeous images. I created this entire presentation in Canva. Um, it is a fantastic tool and it is free to use. You have to upgrade for some of the other features, but it's a great overall tool in general for people who are doing their own marketing and advertising and want to save time. Creating engaging content. This is huge. Okay. So you can have pretty pictures on Instagram and Facebook all day long, but if the content that you have does not capture your audience's attention, they're not going to pay attention to you. Okay. So that's really, really important. So I teach a method called content bucketing and you, where you create content buckets and come up with a strategy and a plan for your social media. Um, I pre plan and post all of my stuff um, ahead of time, a month in advance. I come up with, okay, this month is going to be my strategy. What is my goal? And it could be as simple as promote a class or, um, you know, talk about my goal is to talk about Instagram all month long. And these are the things that I want people to know, or maybe email marketing. Um, and so everything that I post relates back to that strategy. And I pull from those content buckets, whether it's education, whether it's, um, you know, resources and tips, whether it's um, in engagement, like funny stories or memes or things like that. I have all these buckets and then I just go and pull the content from there. And then I put it onto a, I have a monthly calendar that I create for myself that tells me exactly what to post and when to post. Um, and then all I have to do is take this with some photos and some graphics from Canva. I get on a platform called Later and I pre-schedule all my content and it just posts itself right? Um, and it goes every week and then I can go on and do uh, comments and I can do stories and things like that to go along with it. But it really takes the stress out. If you spend a few hours um, before the beginning of the month and you get yourself together with a content calendar, it really, really, really does take the stress out of social media for so many people. And this is a little crazy. I've got five to six posts, uh, you know, a week, but that's because I'm used to this and that's normal. If you start with two to three, I was talking to a, a client today, and she's like, I don't think I could do that. I can do two. And I said, great, do two, but have a strategy and a purpose and have really good content for the two that you do. And then from there, you can start to add a third and a fourth when you start to feel more comfortable. Okay. So that's really, really important is to have some type of strategy. Um, pop for a professional photographer at least once a year. This is really important. I had a professional I think photo shoot about a year ago, maybe about nine months ago, I'm still using the photos from that because you can use them and reuse them in ways you can repurpose the content. It's called evergreen content. You can take it and reuse it, you know, from six months ago, somebody's probably, you know, hasn't seen your, you know, maybe there's some people that didn't see your post or they didn't remember it from six months ago. So you can just reuse it again. Um, that's totally fine, but it is nice to have that branded professional look. Um, you know, especially if you're going to be doing classes or, um, if you've got some advertising that you want to do, um, do that at least once a year, but the rest of the time, like you can take pages class and she'll teach you how to just you know, jump, use your iPhone to, and a filter and create, you know, these, you know, beautiful social media posts and things like that. So, um, I use Lightroom, Adobe Lightroom with a filter and it's awesome. If you guys aren't doing Adobe Lightroom, it's great. And then you can grab a filter and then make everything look branded and consistent with using one filter through your social media feeds. Uh, okay. Uh, videos are so important. If you are not doing videos on social media, 
get out there, do videos. If they don't have to be perfect. I screw up in my videos all the time. Um, I, you know, I, I laugh at myself. I, you know, and then I move on and I just keep going live videos, pre-recorded videos. They do not have to be perfect. They, they do have to be good. You can't be rambling and um, you have to write some good, valuable content. So make sure that you have, you know, a little cheat sheet at the top so you don't get kind of lost in the video. But I love video. People watch video 67% more than they're going to read posts and things like that. So if you don't have a video presence, jump out there, do a two to three minute live video, do a 30 second promo, do a boomerang. Um, people love boomerangs, um, you know, that kind of stuff. Mix it up a little bit. Try something new with the video and, you know, put it on Instagram, put it in your stories. If you guys aren't using Instagram stories, they're amazing. They are probably the number one driver right now on social media is Instagram stories. They're fantastic. So, um, try the videos, go live, tell people you're going live and then don't be scared. Just do it. And if you do get scared, just tell people that, you know, they want to be, that kind of leads me into the next point. They want you to be authentic because they want to be able to build trust with you. They want to think that they're like you, that you're the same, right? That they're buying from a trusted source of somebody who um, they can, you know, relate to. And so being authentic on social media means that it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to mess up in a video and laugh at yourself. Um, it's okay not to be perfect. Um, you just have to present a professional appearance and you can easily do that um, without being perfect. All right. There's a couple notes in the chat. So I just want to make sure I'm not missing any. Okay. Um, yes, Seanette, I'm going to just answer these really quick. The platform that cranks out the, yes, later.com. It's amazing. Um, it's the easiest one that I've found to use because um, you don't, there's not like a ton of distractions and stuff like that. You just literally drop it in, plug it, and it's, and it posts for you. It's really easy. All right. Um, the other thing that I didn't put on this slide that I think is really important is please use hashtags correctly when you're on Instagram. Um, there is nothing worse than just copying pasting hashtags over and over again, and then they don't necessarily relate to what you're posting. That's the easiest way to get your posts blocked uh, or flagged on Instagram. And it's the easiest way to lose followers. So when you are choosing your hashtags, I'd rather have you choose seven to 10 hashtags that are legitimate, that are good for your business, that make sense for the post, than try to fill up with, you know, 20 to, you know, 25 hashtags that are not relevant. Okay. Cause people don't like that at all. It's like kind of a turnoff to those people that are on Instagram. Um, so make sure that you're using your hashtags correctly. And we could do a whole course just on hashtags. I probably need to do one on hashtags. Um, the other thing, make sure you're checking your insights on Facebook and Instagram. Look and see what are your top posts? What are people engaging with? What are they commenting on the most? What are they watching the most? What do they like the most? And then just do more of that. <laughs> That's what they want to see. My top posts right now are a disastrous birthday cake story um, that I had with my son. He gets like the ugliest, worst birthday cake. I really love cake. It was not great. Uh, so I posted that story. And then I've got a couple of videos out there that were kind of my top performing posts. Um, I've got some pictures of family that are great. And then I've got a couple of social media posts that ended up being great. So you just have to go and look and see what analytics look like for you and then just do more of that whichever ones are on the top okay i got these three things at the top i'm going to post more like this that's all it, i mean that's kind of how you start right um so those are my kind of do's so let's look at the don'ts because this happens a lot i see this every day okay don't slap and stick just because you feel like you have to post something oh i haven't posted anything in three days i'm gonna lose followers my engagement my analytics are gonna go down it's okay. Don't freak out about it. It's not the end of the world, but don't, please don't just post something to post something without thinking about how does this relate back to my strategy for the month? And is this even relevant to my audience? Right? Because that's the easiest way for people to be like, Oh, nope, don't like it anymore. It's not relevant. Um, so really think about what you're going to post and um, try to avoid the slap and stick. Um, when I think it's okay to do this though, is in your Instagram stories, because people, you know, that's like a daily glimpse like into your life. And so it's okay to kind of randomly throw stuff up in stories and, you know, make fun of yourself and things like that on those stories. But, you know, on your landing pages, try to keep those um, looking pretty crisp and clean and coherent and, and kind of avoid those kind of weird. And you'll see them in your profile. Once you get a very branded, nice, cohesive look, you'll see those ones that stick out where you're like, yep, I slap and stuck that one. It didn't go so well. And then go and you can delete those. All right. Um, don't go silent. 
It's okay to take a break from social media, but don't completely shut the door. Um, I take weekends off, so I don't usually post on Saturdays and Sundays, and I'm, it doesn't hurt my engagement, my statistics at all. Um, but sometimes I'll throw a post up every once in a while if I've got something good to talk about on a weekend. But uh, it's okay to take a little bit of a breather, but don't take like a month off and then just expect for you to come back and not have to work to build it back up. Because like I said in the beginning, that quote, this is a two-way street. And if you stop talking to your followers, they're going to stop being interested in what you have to say. So go away for a little bit, or if you really do need to take a break, find a friend or a business partner or somebody who can kind of keep it up for you or hire somebody to do it for you while you're taking a little bit of a break. So you don't lose that engagement and you don't lose that momentum that you've already built. Okay. Again, don't be perfect. I think we talked about this. I've had several videos where my son has run in half naked screaming and my husband's drug him out by his feet. It's fine. I don't edit it out. I mean, that's just life. And that's part of, you know, what I try to show people is that I'm just a mom, you know, running my own business. And this is what real life looks for me right now, especially in the middle of pandemic when my kids haven't been in daycare for months. Everybody's going a little crazy. And you know what? I've seen so many other people either commiserate with that, comment on that, or um, I see in their videos, their kids doing the same thing. And it makes me feel normal. So things like that are okay. Um, People want that, okay? Um, so don't forget to edit, right? Uh, grammar is pretty important. Spelling's very important. There's nothing worse than having a spelling mistake. I hope I didn't make any on mine, but I have Grammarly. I have the free version of it. It works really well and it's great for editing posts quickly, okay? Um, so don't avoid negative comments. The first thing that you're gonna wanna do when somebody says something bad or not so nice about your business is delete it. <laughs> Don't do that. Respond to them, provide that customer service, but just don't get in an argument with them on social media. Don't get in a back and forth. That's not the kind of engagement you want. Um, if it gets to the point where it's not good for business and it's not good for them, you can either block them and then they won't be able to come back and comment again, or you can take it into a private message conversation. Okay. But don't be afraid of those comments and just do your best to address them and fix them and make that customer happy and then move on. Right. Cause that's usually all that they want. Again, the other thing I'm going to tell you guys, um, there are lots of options for social media, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, you name it. Um, but don't spread yourself too thin or you'll end up doing none of them well. So pick the platforms where your followers are, where your target market is and go there, use those platforms. Okay. Um, if you have a, if you know your a ton of your followers are young, um, you know, in that like younger Instagram demographic, then you should probably have some stuff on Instagram. Um, if they're more of like the Pinterest crowd, right? The artistic creative, you know, they love, you know, the recipes, searching for things, Pinterest boards, you know, be on Pinterest. Um, if you have an older, maybe a little bit of an older demographic, or it's more of a community feel that you're looking for, that would be your Facebook option there. And then um, if you do a lot of videos, obviously YouTube is where you want to be. So really think about it. Pick two. I tell people to start with two. Pick two. Do the those really well and then you can branch into your third okay um, and then don't be excessive about your hashtags either <laughs> don't be too crazy with the hashtags okay last thing I didn't write on here but I did want to hit in on is don't sound desperate on social media there's nothing now as, as business owners I know there are times when you are very stressed out and where the, the world just seems to be closing in and you're having a rough day <laughs> Please don't go on and be desperate on social media. Please come into my store or my shop or buy from me because this or that. It does not sound good. People are like, Ugh! they get a little bit awkward and then they just kind of like, okay, I don't want to be involved with you anymore. That doesn't sound great. Okay. So try to keep it positive. You can still be real and talk about your emotions and what's going on and stuff like that, but not in relation to your business, if that makes sense. So I, there's a couple businesses that I see do this and I'm like, oh, I feel so bad for them. Um, because you just don't want to sound desperate. Um, it doesn't go well for anybody. Okay, let's talk about how to drive sales from social media. So you can either drive traffic to your website directly, or you can just sell to them directly on social media with Facebook shops and Instagram shops. And Facebook makes it really easy because they own YouTube or they own um, Instagram now. So they're kind of, um, they aren't the same, but it's pretty easy to do kind of both of those. Okay. Um, the other thing that you can do is create that tight knit community. Maybe you have a Facebook group where you've got a lot of engagement. You're doing a lot of, um, you know, interaction and things like that in your Facebook group. Right. So um, those are all ways that you can, drive that traffic. Um, you can do advertising. Retargeting is so huge right now. So if you're, you know, you find an advertising specialist, it's worth it to pay 
for Facebook ads um, if you have a specific objective in, in mind, right? So the easiest Facebook ad I tell people to do is going to be give me your information and I'll give you something free. Okay. That's like, I have a something to download here that you need. Just, you can download it as long as you give me your name and your email information. Right. And we see that a lot. Okay. Those are freebies and those work really well, especially if you're starting out because then all of a sudden you've got their contact information and then you can send them, whether it's a newsletter or weekly emails, promotions, sales, stories, whatever you want. You've now got their information for life or until they tell you they don't want to be subscribed anymore. Okay. Um, that is big. You pay Facebook once for an ad and then you get to capture their information and keep it for life. Okay. That's huge. That's so really worth it. Um, you can also run giveaways. These I see, um, businesses on Facebook and Instagram doing giveaways all the time and they're huge. I just ran one for one of my clients. They just launching a brand new business. They went from 15 followers to 138 followers in like three days just from running a giveaway. Uh, it was a good giveaway. <laughs> it was an Amazon gift card. People like money. Um, but really you can see what is in your budget to do and don't be afraid to run a giveaway on social media. It works really well. Uh, involve other local businesses, grab a couple other downtown businesses and you can do an Instagram swap where like it's called an Instagram takeover or a Facebook takeover where you go and you jump on their page one day and then they go and jump on yours and post. Um, you can also do some cross promotions together. Those work really well because then you get yourself in front of a whole new group of followers and you're promoting another small business. So those are my favorite to do. I love doing those. And then again, those super fans, those gig harbor moms, <laughs> those are the things that you want to try to create. Create those super fans. Okay. All right. So a couple other things about driving sales. You want to keep it as simple as possible for the consumer. Okay. So offer multiple easy checkout options. There is no easier way to kill a sale than if it takes a long time for them to get to the checkout or if they have trouble along the way. Um, so offer, you know, Venmo, Apple Pay, credit cards, you know, all a bunch of different options to make it convenient for them. And then I even see some businesses that are offering, I forget the name of it, but it's like a company where um, you can make payments on it. You know, it's like you can pay, you know, $50 now or, or two payments of $25 over the course of, you know, interest free. Um, and so there are some really great companies that are doing that now. And that makes it super easy for someone who's like, oh, I don't know if I have $50 now, but I could split it and do 25 now and 25 next month. Um, so they've got some really great options there. And then you want to stick with two to three clicks. If your consumer has to go more than that, there's a chance you will lose them. Probably 50% of the time you're going to lose them. And what I mean by that, so for example, somebody said, hey, do you want to join my, you know, like page sale giveaway thing that's happening in, in a week? And I said, sure, why not? I'll, I'll check it out. And I had to take by the third click, I'll tell you guys, I was not there yet and I was out. <laughs> it's like, enter your Google ID. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, nope, I'm out and off time for this. Okay. So make it as easy as possible. Two to three clicks max to get what they need. And then you have to have a clear call to action. So make sure in your posts, when you're posting to Instagram, to Facebook, um, when you're doing your social media, clear call to action, which means kind of treat them almost like a fifth grader when it comes to this. Tell them exactly what you want them to do. Click now to register or, you know, go to my website. Here it is to buy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or call this number, although people aren't going to call probably as much or email this, you know, for information, email so-and-so. Those call to actions have to be very clear and almost elementary just because literally think people are scrolling so fast through their social media. You're going to stop their scroll with a great picture. Then you're going to capture them with great content. And then they're going to go to buy and they want to take two clicks to buy. And then when they get to the end, you got to make it as easy for them as possible so they don't get bored and give up. Okay. Um, remember, keep engaging and keep the value coming. If you ever get stuck with um, what to say, how to say, what to post on social media, always, always go back to giving value. Um, I follow when I first started and I continue to follow social media examiner and they are kind of like everything about what works with social media. And Mike Stelzner is the person who started that company. And I go back to what he said. If you provide value, if you provide something that your customers and your followers need and want, they will become your customers for life. So that's why I do my free newsletters. That's why I do free classes. That's why I host education and training classes for free. I just want to provide people with as much help with social media as possible. And then I know by doing that, my business will just work 
they will drive the sales in. I don't have to ask for them. I don't have to advertise as much because I just am giving as much value as I can. And I do it authentically and I mean it and I love it. And when you do that, it really works and it will just come back to you. It takes a couple of months to get it going, right? It takes, you know, two, three, four months, but you'll then start to see that if you can give that value back. All right, let's talk about some of the local businesses that do a really great job of just that, adding value, looking great on social media, having really great e-commerce sites. All right, I think we all know Heritage Distilling. They do an amazing job. Their website's gorgeous. It's very easy to use. It's very click friendly. I can find exactly what I need. And I know going from their Facebook page to their website to their Instagram, it is branded. It's gorgeous. It's very professional. I would buy from them just by looking at their website and their Instagram. You see they've got their colors. Their logo is the same. Um, I've been working with a client, not local to Gig Harbor, um, but I've been working with a client further out and I'm doing a social media audit for them basically because they are all over the board when it comes to their branding, when it comes to their content. And I'm just basically taking a look at what they're doing and telling them, hey, these are areas that you can improve in. And this is, it's not hard. This is what you need to do. Um, this is a great example of somebody who's doing it right. It's it's gorgeous. It looks great. They have 16,000 followers, but of course they do because they sell really yummy drinks. <laughs> so um, that's great. And they probably got business from all over the world in the U S and they have amazing hand sanitizer, which is in hot commodity right now. So um, I love their hand sanitizer. Okay. So let's look at, Hey, Darlin. I know you guys are on here tonight. Um, I loved your page. I loved your website because it's very simple, very easy to use. And it connected with me instantly because on a personal level, I'm a mom, I'm a small business owner, I'm a woman. I loved what I saw so much to the point where when I was putting this together <laughs> to um, you know, create this, I was like, oh, I need some gifts for um, some of my clients and for a couple of my employees. So I literally just messaged Brie and I was like, hey, can I come down and buy some candles? You know, Cause they're great gifts. And so think about like, that's a huge impact from me just loving the look and feel connecting with you guys as moms and as small business owners in Gig Harbor got me out of my house, out of my slippers and my pajamas down there to buy some stuff from you guys because I loved it. So that's how it works. <laughs> and so you guys do a great job. Your Instagram's gorgeous. Your Facebook's great. Um, love your website. You guys are doing it right. And one of the things that I want to point out, I've got a quote at the end about this is you do not have to have 16,000 followers to be good. I looked at some of the posts that you guys have on your Hey Darlin shop, and I looked at some of your personal ones too. You guys have a, a huge number of people that comment and engage on some of your posts, right? So I'd rather have a thousand people that talk to me than a million people that don't because you're gonna get so much further on social media with engagement, with comments, with back and forth, building those relationships with a thousand people um, than you will with a million people that are just um, either fake or just you know not your target demographic. So I love the fact that you guys are small. You don't have a million followers, you don't have 16,000. You've got a thousand, which is a great number, but they're a thousand of the right people, right? So that's really important. So you guys are doing awesome, I love it. Okay. Tickled Pink. Um, I love them too. They're great. They're a local small business. They've got multiple locations. Um, their feed is really colorful. It's really eye-pleasing. You go and you see it and you're like, ah, oh, this is fun, right? This makes me feel good. And again, their website, it's really easy to see that I'm going from their Instagram feed here. It's pink. Uh, I can see the colors. They've got their logo on there. It all is branded and matches to their website, which is the same. I know I'm in the same place, right? Um, so they're a great example as well. I love kind of what they do and um, they have a, you know, a great way to market and advertise what they've got as well. So love them. Okay. Here's that quote I was telling you guys about. I would rather have a tight knit community of a thousand followers than a million strangers. You're not doing yourself any favors if you have a million strangers or a million weirdos <laughs> or creepy people because they're out there on your social media feed. You want, if you're in Gig Harbor, you want people in Gig Harbor to start and then you can branch out and then you can go, you know, Washington State, then you can go West Coast, then you can go US, then you can go bigger, but start small with the people in the community that will connect with you and matter the most. All right, summary. Whew, I gave you guys a lot of information. Um, we talked about social media, how it kind of combines with and merges with e-commerce. I talked to you about a few of the tips for success and then some ways to drive sales and then um, kind of wrapped it all up with some good examples from some of our own amazing local business owners. 
So if you guys are interested in following up and finding out more, so like John said, I have a free newsletter. It's called The Sweet Life. You can um, subscribe to that right on my website. And I also have a Facebook group called The Sweet Life. Um, it's not a Facebook page. I get a lot of people that go and search for it and they're like, I only see cinnamon rolls and cupcakes. <laughs> it's not a business page. It's a private Facebook group. And um, I do a lot of fun giveaways. I do a lot of interaction. I do a lot of social media tips. I'll do videos just specific for that group. Um, so those are two ways that you can um, follow me. They're totally free. Um, I also do monthly classes. I kind of alternate with a workshop, which is a paid workshop. Um, I'm actually doing this month, uh, creating engaging content that's on Thursday. And that's where I'm going to teach you guys my bucket method. So that's something if you guys are interested in, you know, how, what to post, when to post, how to post, um, creating that engaging content for social media. Um, that is what I'm doing this month. And then next month, I think I'm doing a free class on hashtags because I see people do that wrong a lot. So I'm going to talk about hashtags and then you can always follow me on social media. I do a lot of tips and things like that for social media and the average business owner on Instagram, Facebook. And then I do use YouTube, um, not as much. I use YouTube mostly for like private links for classes and stuff like that. But um, I do have some freebie videos on there as well. So, all right. Thank you guys so much. Um, I hope that you learned a little bit of something about social media that you take some little um, breadcrumbs away and start to implement them into your social media world and your e-commerce. Uh, I think we have a couple minutes. Hopefully I didn't go over too bad. Let's see what time it is. Oh, we got a few minutes left. So uh, Carrie Ann, there was a question about hashtags from Seanette. Okay. She okay. wanted to know, do you add hashtags at the end of the original post or in comments to the post? You can do both. Um, it just depends. If you have a really long post, I would say you could put it as the first comment. And if you're scheduling in later, it actually lets you post it as the first comment in there. Um, it just depends on what you want it to look like. A lot of people I see if they use a lot of hashtags, they put them in the comments. Um, if you don't have a ton or if they're kind of catchy hashtags that go with your post, it's good to put them. Just make sure you have a space between the end of your text. I use dots. I just use periods. I do two or three periods, space it out, and then I drop the hashtags in after that. Um, I've played around with both ways and I honestly don't see a difference between in the comments versus in the text. Um, they both kind of work for me, so. Thank you. Yeah. The only thing to add to that, um, a lot of times what will help putting it into the comments is it gives you a comment. It does. And that yeah. helps with the algorithm. So it's really in that first hour that's the most important um, that you're present once you've made that post because that hour is what helps your algorithm. So I always know that I, like for me, I view that as lead time. So once I've made my post, I'm sticking around and engaging with other people. I'm making that comment of hashtags, liking my own. Because as soon as somebody sees somebody else has liked it, it's a mental thing and they start liking and interacting. Yeah, I would say pick your post that you want to do that with if you've got, I also have a couple people who have what they call a bomb squad. So they have like, they're like, hey, I've got this post. It's a, you know, it's a really good one. I want people to see it. It's, you know, maybe a sale or something going on. And so they have a group of like four or five friends and they also business owners and they text them. And they say, hey, jump on this post just went out, comment like, and, and it helps warm up that algorithm and it gets it going for them. So mm -hmm. That's another thing you can do is have that little bomb squad of people ready to go when you have a great post and they can drop the comments in their like and share and then that just helps get it going too. All right, what other questions do you guys have? Any, any other questions? I'll look in the chat too. There were some things in the chat. All right. Okay, I think we answered everything in the chat. Again, I used Canva later and um, I think that's it for, I try to keep it simple. I don't wanna overwhelm people, especially if you got like somebody who's new to social media, you don't wanna give them a ton of different platforms. Um, for videos, I always get the question about videos. Um, again, I'm not a professional videographer. I use, um, honestly, just go live on my phone. I use iMovie and then I also use an app called Headliner. Um, it's an app and it's a web platform. Um, and it's great because you can do, you can upload up to, I think, 10 videos per month for free. And then you can also add captions. So most people watch videos on mute or silent and it's, they're not, they're probably not going to, you know, watch your video and tune in as much if they can't figure out what it's about. And so by putting those captions and adding those captions in, 
is really helpful. And that was probably, I struggled with that in the beginning because trying to find a way to add captions, it doesn't cost a lot of money, um, is tough. So that I found using Headliner has been great. You just upload your video and then it, you do have to go in. Sometimes um, it doesn't catch everything 100%, but you can easily edit the words if they're incorrect. And then you download it and you've got captions on your video. So. So I have a question about later. Yeah. Um, does that post to more than one uh, platform? All at yeah, the same time. It's, it's just for Instagram and Facebook, but okay. you can set it up to where it posts to both those platforms. Yeah. Yeah, it's really easy. It's like a calendar. You literally drag and drop the picture when you want it. You type in the text, put in your hashtags, add first comment, put a location in, set it up, and then it goes out for you. Nice. Yeah. Does Hootsuite do all of them? Like Twitter and yeah. Hootsuite will do all social media? It does. So Hootsuite, I found, because what I do with a lot of my clients is I take them on, I help them with their social media, and then I let them go. And I found that Hootsuite was way too complicated because there's a lot more to that platform than scheduling. So for someone who's more advanced, I think that's a great one. And it costs a little bit more too. Um, and that will do multiple platforms. But I found that most people that I, at least that I'm working with are just, they can only swallow the two. <laughs> So, um, and it's, it's very easy to use and you can, there's a, um, an app version of it too, where you can go in and change stuff. So, but yeah, Hootsuite's another one. Sprout Social is another good one. And, um, I love the, the blogs, the Hootsuite and Sprout Social blogs. If you're looking for tips for social media and things like that, um, their blogs are amazing. I love those too. And they're very helpful. Probably one of my biggest takeaways is don't go silent. Yeah. Don't go silent. <laughs> yeah. It's hard. Sometimes that gets busy, you know, um, but you just literally yeah. see yourself back so many steps if you're completely silent on social media. So even if you can just do a little bit, or if you know, you're going to be gone on vacation, schedule some stuff ahead of time or have somebody else, you know, help you out for a couple of weeks. If you know, if they can um, yeah. to make it so you don't lose that engagement, but you get that much needed mental break. <laughs> Is there kind of a sweet spot? Or post your vacay photos. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. People love to see you on like on your personal side. So even though it might look a little not so much like your branding, people eat that up. Yeah. yeah just throw a filter on there. You're good to go. <laughs> John, what was your question? Was well, there kind of a sweet spot? I mean, I know with Milva, we've kind of found that you know we're once a week, but we feel like we should be more. But yeah. then at the same time, we don't want to bombard people with the same picture of a pizza. Right. So for you guys, then it's creating those content buckets, finding other things to post. Um, so maybe one day it's a pizza. Maybe one day it's just a spotlight on your favorite brands of pepperoni, or maybe one day you're um, talking about one of the vendors that you have that brings in your cheese, right? And you do a, a spotlight on, you know, them instead. Um, maybe you are sharing like a new wine that you guys got in and then you share another pizza or you share a picture of the restaurant and then you're talking about the hours that you're open and um, kind of repeat that process. So you're not always talking about pizza, but it's in the pizza realm, if that makes sense. Again, kind of almost like personalizing in a sense where you're showing sort of the backstory in a sense of what, what yeah. who we are, and what makes us. Yeah. So have you ever told the story on social media of how the business came to be? Uh, no. You should do that. People love stories. Uh, if that's the one thing that I could foot stomp the most in, and the one thing that I help people with the most is telling their story. And I don't mean like a long winded we started in here in, in, you know, in 1995 and blah, blah, we have three offices and you know, that that's kind of a boring story. But if you pick, like I tell people to think of stories as moments in time. So every day you have stories happening to, to, to you in your life. Right. And so start by telling those stories. So think about like the moment that you decided you were going to open your business and why you decided it was going to be pizza. Tell that story. And then a week or two later, tell about the first pizza that you ever sold or tell about the first customer that ever came in, right? And how it made you feel and the excitement, um, you know, that kind of stuff. So those are the stories that you want to tell. And through that, people get to know you. They get to connect with you. They resonate with you. Um, and then they're going to remember you more. So I, that's why I tell stories about crappy birthday cakes and losing it, losing my mind, having my kids home during quarantine, because the people in my customer base and the people I'm marketing to are 
in the same spot. They're all entrepreneurs trying to survive with their kids at home um, or, you know, trying to figure out this, you know, crazy new world. So I show a little bit of that while still keeping a professional image. So I would say for you guys, once a week is not um, quite enough. I would say if you could bump it up to two to three times a week by putting together just some, some constant, you know, just getting yourself set up with content buckets and figuring out, you know, okay, this is the, the three categories that we're going to post in this week. Um, you could probably get some engagement and grow some of your followers there too. Even reviews, posting yeah. a review that somebody left, I think it reminds, I mean, you might not get like tons of engagement with it, but it reminds people how important it is yeah. as a small business to get those reviews. Because when you're looking up a restaurant, you want to know <laughs> what people are, what good things people are saying. So. Yeah. yeah. So John, you might, if you haven't checked the chat, Linda Glenn has, um, Give, made a comment to you. So, also, I never get tired of pizza pictures. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Bring on the pizza pics. And, and I like the or story. even your staff. Uh -huh. Even pictures yeah. of your staff. Linda suggested uh, the history of his building, which I think would be fascinating, really mm -hmm. fabulous to have something about that on there. And you guys have yeah. a great sign up there now. Hello, Linda. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that's great. Um, yeah, I mean, you're in such a cool spot and you're, you know, such a great like backstory um, to where you guys are. So I think, yeah, I think that's awesome. I think there's so many things you can do. You just got to sit down and write the ideas and then implementing. The hardest thing is writing the content and then implementing. So but yeah, your cookies are amazing. You could just do cookie post every day. I'm like, maybe <laughs> you guys do pumpkin. Are you guys going to do pumpkin cookies for the holidays? <laughs> yeah, in the past. We're back, so maybe, yeah. And then you could do peppermint bark cookies and then you could just do a whole feed of cookies and you'd be selling out of those cookies like crazy. <laughs> so awesome. All right. Do you guys have, what else do you guys have? Any other burning social media questions? And if not to, um, I think, uh, Mary, when you guys send out the recording, will you just put my email and my contact info and sure will. If you guys have questions, feel free to email me or message me on social media. Um, and I'm happy to, you know, just answer quick questions and things like that. And, um, you know, I'm happy to, if you like, Hey, should I post this or that? I'm happy to help you give you some guidance and things like that to help get you in the right direction. So wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Carrie Ann. And thank you. Thanks to everyone for, uh, for joining this conversation here today. Uh, I know, I know for me, I've, I've written down a page of notes that I'm going to bring back to Noble and, and start to implement it. So <laughs> I really, really appreciate this. Good. And feel free to send the slides out to everybody too. That's totally fine. So, okay. Thanks yeah. for inviting me, John. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Good seeing you, Hannah. All right. You guys have a good night. All right. Take care, everyone. Have a great night. Bye. We'll see you at a future uh, business resource series topic. <laughs>